Good morning, brothers and sisters, and welcome to this week's service. It's our second week of our Advent season, and we are expecting the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are going to begin this service as we usually do, by lighting the candle together. And this specific candle, we continue to light it to remind ourselves that indeed Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God and the light of the world. And as I said, friends, today is our second Sunday of Advent. Last week, we lit the first candle, and it was the candle of hope. Today, we are going to light the second candle, and it is the candle of peace. O oh God of peace, come, come and form us into your peacemakers. Enable us to look within ourselves and to make straight our crooked hearts, to patiently and loving await changes in ourselves and in others, as you gather us tenderly and hold us close. May we also show that same compassion to the world. Fill our hearts with your peace and our lives with your love, that this may flow from our lives into the world. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Savior, and our peace. Amen. Let us now take the opening prayer, and let us pray together. Dear Jesus, you are the author and perfecter of our faith. You save and sustain us. Help us to trust in, your, in you and your worship, whether we have a little or a lot of little. May our praise bring you glory and remind us of your promises. We love you, Lord. We seek your presence and we worship you alone. Father God, we come before you today laying down our pride and arrogance and confess our need for you. We lay our needs at your feet, Lord, and worship you alone. Without you, we are nothing. Teach us how to worship you in all transparency. And also, Lord, we pray that you fill us with your spirit as we open our mouth in praise to you. Lord, you have told us in your word that you hear our prayers. We are crying out to you. We are humbling ourselves before you and seeking your face. We come together as a church body to seek you. We repent and turn from our wicked ways. Thank you for hearing us, Lord. Thank you for your forgiveness and healing. Thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And so, friends, let us now worship God in song.
We now find our scripture reading from the gospel as it is written for us by Matthew. We read from chapter 3 from verse 1 through verse 12. Matthew chapter 3 from verse 1 3 through verse 12. And the heading of the passage reads, John the Baptist prepares the way. In those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is he who was spoken through the prophet Isaiah, a voice of one calling in the wilderness, Prepare the way for the Lord, make straight the path for him. John's clothes were made of camel's hair. He had a leather belt around his waist, his food was locust and wild honey. People went out to him from Jerusalem and all Judea and the whole region of Jordan. Confessing their sins, they were baptized by him in the, Jordan, in the river Jordan. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to where he was baptizing, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who want you to flee, to flee from coming wrath? Produce fruit in keeping with repentance. And do not think you can say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. I tell you that out of these stones, God can raise up children for Abraham. The axe has been laid to the root of the trees, and every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance, but after me, comes the one who is more powerful than I, who sandals I'm not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the, power, with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hands, and he will clear his threshing floor, gathering wheat into barn and burning up the chaff with unquenchable fire. This is the word of God, and thanks be to God for the reading of his word. Friends, we are in a second Sunday of the season called Advent in our Christian calendar. It is a four-week season which happens before Christmas. And it is a season that calls us to prepare ourselves for the coming of the Lord not just prepare ourselves by going to the shops and seeing shops being decorated with Christmas decorations, but also prepare ourselves, but prepare our hearts to receive the coming of the Lord. And as we continue from the Gospel of Matthew, a Gospel that is indeed written by Matthew, and it is a gospel, dear believers in the Lord, that tells us about the good news that Jesus Christ is the promised Savior and the one that he has come to fulfill the promises that were made in the Old Testament. And also, the good news is not only for those that lived in the time when Jesus was born, but the good news also is meant for us who believe in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Matthew then, believers in the Lord, presents Jesus as a good teacher who has authority to interpret the law of God. Matthew also is someone who grew up in a context that feared and worshipped God. So Matthew you would realize that Matthew does not, mean, does not say in his writing the kingdom of God, but he says the kingdom of heaven. Matthew doesn't declare Jesus as the son of God, but as the son of man. 
because he was from a generation or from a context that revered God, that feared God, that you would not call him by name. And as we begin to prepare ourselves for the coming of the Lord in this second week of Advent, Matthew takes us to the preparation of Jesus by John the Baptist. John the Baptist prepares people for the coming of the Lord. And so let us look at John the Baptist and Jesus Christ. And I am looking at them because one would call them cousins. And so their mothers had a relationship. So let's look at the context. And so John the Baptist takes stage just before Jesus Christ was born. John was six months old when Jesus when Jesus' mother was told that he is going to have a son. John and Jesus were close in age. And one would even think that they grew up together and they played together as children. John's parents were Elizabeth and Zechariah and they were old. Even too old to have a baby. But the angel Gabriel appeared to Zechariah announcing to Elizabeth that they would soon have a baby. Catch the name of the angel. The name of the angel is Gabriel. And it is the same Gabriel appearing to Zechariah and Elizabeth. Just as the same Gabriel later appears to Mary and in both cases announces birth. So the birth of Jesus and John the Baptist were announced to their parents under special circumstances by the same angel. Jesus' mother was a virgin and John's mother was too old. So in our own interpretations, these two women, it was impossible for them to have babies. And so the angel then first goes to Elizabeth and secondly goes to Mary. John first, then Jesus. The old woman Elizabeth did get pregnant. In the same way, Mary got pregnant. Again, the sequence follows. Elizabeth first, then Mary. John first, then Jesus. There were problems, as I said, with both pregnancies. Because Elizabeth was too old and Mary was too young. Mary didn't even have a husband. She was a virgin. And so how could then she have a baby? So both Elizabeth and Mary required a miracle to get pregnant. And they did get pregnant, both of them. Again, first Elizabeth, then Mary. So we are now seeing a pattern of Elizabeth first, then Mary, John, then Jesus. So John started his life one step ahead of Jesus. He lived his life one step ahead of Jesus. John died one step ahead of Jesus. We don't know much about John's childhood or Jesus' childhood except for the story of Jesus visiting the temple as a boy. Other than that, we know nothing about his life. The next thing we hear about John or Jesus is when John emerges as a God's messenger from the passage that we read, saying to people, prepare the way of the Lord, make your path straight. And that was the beginning of the good news according to Mark. So again, the pattern continues. It's John first, preparing the way for Jesus. Once John had set the stage, Jesus would begin his ministry. It's first John, then Jesus. John begins his ministry by preaching. Repent for the kingdom 
of heaven is at hand. As I said that John does not say the kingdom of God, but he says the kingdom of heaven because he reveres God and he knows that you don't just say the name of God in his generation, but you revere God's name so much that you don't just use it in vain. And listen to that one more time. John preached, repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And so Jesus followed shortly afterwards, preaching, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Do we still get that? First, John preaches repentance. And then Jesus preaches repentance. And the pattern now continues. It's John first, then Jesus. But even though John the Baptist was first in the sequence, he was never first in importance. John said of Jesus, I will baptize you with water for repentance, but he who comes is mightier than me. I am not even worthy to carry or even to tie the laces of his shoes. He will baptize you in the Holy Spirit. And so, they are both operating in the kingdom of God. And so, friends, we now find ourselves in this passage of John saying, Repent, for the kingdom of God has come near. Make your way straight for the Lord. Prepare your way for the Lord. And so John does not say, or John does not mean that when you repent, it's only when your kingdom, the kingdom of God comes. But God is saying, the kingdom of God is coming, so repent. And so the kingdom of God's coming does not depend on whether they repent or not. But we need to make way because we need to make we need to repent because whether we repent or we don't repent, Jesus is coming. And so the advent of season then, friends, makes us aware that we need to prepare so that when the king of our lives come, we are ready. And it was a culture and tradition back in Jesus' days that when a king is coming, there would be a herald, there would be someone who would go around in the village saying, prepare the way, make the way straight. If literally the roads needed to be fixed, they would be fixed because indeed the king is coming in to the village. And so John then says that in the same way that people would prepare for the king, they need to prepare for their lives because Jesus Christ is coming. And so John's message is simple. John is not great. His way is to just to make people aware that Jesus Christ is coming. To call them to change their ways. And so, John says to the people that they must repent. They must turn away from their old lives. They must come back to God. They must turn away from their sinful nature into a fruitful life. They must turn away from their own fleshly desires to a life that is pleasing of God. They must turn away from life of destruction and turn away to life that is in Jesus. And so, when John is saying this, there had been no prophet of God for four centuries. And back in the days, people knew that there would be a Messiah that's coming. And because there's been four centuries of quiet time, people were anxious to hear from a prophet. And so, John fits the bill. John fits the description of someone who is a prophet. 
calling the people to repentance in preparation of the coming of God's kingdom for the day of the Lord, for the day when everything would be done right. And everything that John talks about, he is somewhat like telling what the prophet Isaiah has said. And so people then see John as the prophet of God. And again, the message that John is preaching is in line with God. Make a way for the Lord. And when you look at what the attire of John, he came wearing clothes made of camel's hair and a leather belt around his waist. Prophet, Eli Prophet Elijah in the Old Testament wore clothing of camel's hair with a leather belt. The Jews expected Elijah to return before the Messiah came. So John's dress code identifies him as the fulfillment of that prophecy. Later, Jesus will make these connections so that people will understand, so that people will understand that Jesus Christ has come to fulfill all the prophecies of the Old Testament. And so, believers in the Lord, now the Bible then says to us that we need to make straight ways for the Lord. We need to prepare our hearts because God cares about our hearts. We need to prepare our lives. We need to come back, move away from that way that leads to destruction to a way that leads to life. And the only way that leads to eternal life can only be found in Jesus Christ. And so hear the voice of God, friends. Repent for the kingdom of God has come near. The one who was spoken about in the prophet Isaiah, a voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord. And so in the second week of Advent, let us hear the message that calls us to a deeper reflection, that calls us to look at our lives, that calls us to look at our sinful nature and repent so that when Jesus comes, we are found worthy to be God's children. And I pray that may God help us as we repent to move to a new life that is in Christ. The life of eternity. And let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that in this time of expectation, you call us to, rem to remind us that the kingdom of heaven has come. And so as a result, Lord God, we need to repent, turn away from our sinful nature to a life in you. Grant us power, Lord God, to turn away from our old sins and give us power, Heavenly Father, to live as the children of the kingdom. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, amen. And let us... Um, close these words with the, word, with the words of the benediction. And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and evermore. Amen.